grabbed this rough green snake out of one of these trees. A pretty long one too. He's like at least he's probably like two and a half feet long. He could even be push, pushing three feet, but it's, like I said, it's just hard to tell because they're so small and slender. Oh. Here's three. We can measure them now. So we just measured this rough green snake and it is right at three feet long, which is crazy because like I said, he doesn't look that big, but he is really slender. It's a pretty big rough green snake, one of the bigger ones that I've seen. It's another great day. Well, it's a great night, hopefully. Um, I ain't got nothing to do tonight, so I'm gonna go do some road cruising. Uh, the temperature's gonna be like 70 degrees tonight and it's gonna dip down to 69 around eight o'clock and then it's gonna or nine o'clock I think it is and then it goes right back up to 70 for most of the night so pretty great road cruising temperatures for March I mean come on it is March though so there might not be a lot on the road but I figured why not I'm gonna give it a try and if I don't get anything I don't get anything all right guys we got our first live snake tonight it's probably a ribbon oh nope it's a scarlet snake what do you know of course it is Lots of these guys out here. Cool, second one of the year, this is a tiny one. Beautiful little snake. Love scarlet snakes. Yeah, I love the ones around here too because they have these nice blotches. Got out that high white for blending into the sandy soil. Beautiful little snake. And uh, we saw a dead ribbon earlier. Um, it's a nice quiet night, a little tiny moon up there. feeling pretty snaky and the road is still kind of warm so I'm just sitting here looking at the snake and I'm realizing it's very interesting looking it's one of the more interesting looking ones I've seen it's got a little aberrancy there on his neck pattern it's got a lot of darker color in those white areas and of course the blotches with the high white in between because of the sandy soil in this area you get these nice blotched variations of the uh, scarlet snake but anyways we're gonna put him back I believe he was going this way but um it does look a little bit on the thin side maybe we can offer it some water I bet he's thirsty we've had kind of a drought here we're gonna see if he wants anything to drink No? Maybe not. Okay, well, we offered him some. Let him get back to it. Here you go, bud. All right, let's see what else is out. So I would usually get hyped out of my tree about a scarlet snake, um, which they are cool, don't get me wrong. They are the most common snake on this road, though, for some reason. That's like mostly what I see on this road. Still cool nonetheless, but let's see what else we can find. All right, kind of a busy highway here, but next live snake of the night is a banded water snake. Yeah, I just cruised a mud snake that was five and a half feet long, dead of course, they always are. But anyway, yeah, cool. Banded water snake, he was crossing the road, so I'm gonna put him back over there because that's the way he was going. Well off the road. Not a snake, just a stick. Well guys, I was just walking up on this trash here and there's a brown chin racer right here. Oh, he jumped. <laughs> I was gonna flip the trash, but there's a snake on top of it. Now he's covered in poop, nasty. Well, that's pretty cool, nice brown chin. Should be a pretty good day for herping. Now he's under it. <laughs> well, that's kind of a weird find for here. You see a ring neck snake, which if we were in Georgia, I would say it would be the most common snake right now at this time of year, but neat belly pattern on this guy. Got kind of a line down his belly. Let me get it to focus. There we go. See that line? I don't know what it is about down here that makes them 
so uncommon compared to in South Georgia, but for whatever reason, you just don't see many ringnecks down here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Interesting looking ringneck and a nice first in hand snake of the day. The racer got away, but. Right cool. there's a big broadhead skink. Pretty huge. I don't think I'll be able to catch him. He already sees me, but we'll see if we can get closer. Yep, there he goes. Pretty cool. A little tiny brown chin racer. I'm going to see if I can grab him. All right, so here's this little brown chin racer. It was actually in this flower bed here. Oh, pretty cool. Um, he's nice and warmed up, so he's not too happy. He's ready to fight. If you look, he has a white chin, so you would think he'd be a southern black racer. He is, in fact, a brown chin. You can see all that brown on his neck. Hey, hey. <laughs> all that brown on his face. Not much on his actual chin, but he's got it brown. And I assume as he gets older, that brown might fill in on his chin as well. Anyways, another thing I noticed about these with black racers this size, they're usually still showing some pattern. This guy's solid black. So I think that is one difference I've noticed with the brown chins is they're usually um, a lot darker as young snakes. Anyways, we'll let him go and continue hiking. There's a bald eagle standing in front of that school. There it goes. What a huge bird of prey. He's massive. We're gonna try to get a better photo of him, but he took off. What's up guys? I'm out here in Apalachicola National Forest right now doing some road cruising. My hope today is to see some sort of king snake. I was hoping to see a mole king snake, but I've done a few passes now and I'm thinking just maybe I should head down and do some tin flipping at a slightly different site in here. Later tonight I might come back and see if anything is moving on this road because it looks great and mole kings for my knowledge usually move later in the, in the day in the afternoon or early in the morning so i'm thinking i might come back and try for them later there's also a chance for copperheads on this road which is interesting for florida um, there's also of course we can get apalachicola kings here and a whole bunch of other really cool species all right here's some tin let's give it a flip a skink all right guys little update uh, I've been driving all day and unfortunately I haven't seen any live snakes I saw one DOR racer this morning Got here's a snake I think it's a copperhead finally it's a copperhead Wow nice little copperhead what's up buddy an Apalachicola National Forest. Not a snake you'd expect to see in Florida, but um, they're here. Super cool. I'm gonna take a few cell phone photos of this guy and then get him off the road. First snake I've seen all day, so I'm gonna take just a minute to photograph him. So copperheads, like this one here, only have a few places they can be found in North Florida along the Panhandle and the Apalachicola region, which, are, which is where we're at right now. And over in the far west part of the Panhandle, there's a little place where you can find them. They only occur in Florida in places, whoa, places where the habitat's kind of similar to more mountainous areas. So you have the Apalachicola River running through the Panhandle, right? Some of those hills kind of roll off from the hillier area in West Georgia that eventually connects up there to the Appalachians. So it's kind of like a foothill situation. The copperheads kind of follow that river drainage all the way down into Florida, which is pretty cool. Interesting snake, they're super common in some places, but you know, they do interest me because their distribution is kind of strange in the deep south. They're only found uh, in certain parts of Florida, and in most of South Georgia, they're absent. So, kind of interesting. There's no real reason I can figure why, other than um, just their habitat preferences. Look at 
this right here crossing the stream. That's a rough greeny. Look at that fantastic beast. Starting to see a lot of these. <laughs> and there's a little baby cottonmouth right here. Look at how cute. We got another cottonmouth right here, just as pretty as the last one. It's also a little baby. Look at that guy, in situ. I heard movement, that's why I looked up here. So it sounded like there was something in the tree, and then I looked down here, and so. And number two, or sorry, number three, with a meal in his belly. I was just thinking, where we see all these little cotton mouse, where's the big one at? This is probably mama right here. It appears that she's asleep, so we're just gonna leave her alone, but look at her. It's perfectly tucked away in here. Pretty cool. It's a beautiful cottonmouth, too. Well, we thought we'd seen all the cottonmouths, but there's another one that makes a number four, including the big one. Pretty cool. I'm just gonna leave him be just like we did with all the other ones and keep moving. Oh. She perked up a little bit. It's okay. There she goes. She went in the hole. We got a baby cotton there. And we got a baby cotton there. We got a box turtle here that Kaylee just spotted. It's a Gulf Coast box turtle, so it is huge. And um, look at his head. It's white. He's just cooling off in the stream here. Let's take a look at this guy's head. Goodness gracious. It is a he. So look at the size of this box turtle's head and look at how wide it is. That's pretty crazy and I don't think that's a scar or anything. At first I thought he just had like dried dust on his head because it is really dry right now, but I think that is just his pattern, his color. Look at the size of his head compared to my thumb. That's huge for a box turtle. And they're not aquatic either. He's just taking a a little bath in the river. When it's hot, they do go down to rivers and swamps and stuff. A water snake right here, a banded water snake. And he looks to be fairly pretty. Let's see what he looks like. <laughs> Chill. Hey, that's a pretty water snake. Look at those bands. I think it's a bronze frog. He's got all this goop in his mouth, hanging out of his mouth there. Really? Yeah. I see him now. And that's because of this guy, this slug that he just tried to eat. So now his mouth is basically like glued up. Come here, bud. I want to help you. So I'm going to try to get this out of his mouth. It can actually glue their mouth shut. All right, we just found this little baby cotton mouth right here, and then Caitlin spotted one we literally almost grabbed on the way through here by accident. He's just sitting on a branch, apparently. So we're gonna leave these little guys to what they were doing and continue our hike down this creek. Nice, we gotta race. Oh, <laughs> what do you see? What? Is that something's tail? Where's yeah, it is. Is it a snake? Oh, no, it's a lizard tail. tail. Oh, I see it. Oh, he must have just eaten a lizard. Like, he was watching your face. Oh yeah, he's going. There's a lizard tail twitching down there. Gotcha. Looks like a skink or something. And this guy was literally just like on the hunt, so he, he probably he probably just ate that lizard. They eat things very fast after they catch them. Right I think it's a lady. Probably, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I saw some brown on that chin. Mad. So mad. She likes me with the tail. Alligators will wiggle their tail? Oh yeah. Never seen them do that. I literally couldn't see him from there was a stick in the way. We got cotton mouth number three. Right here. Look at that beautiful little snake. They really are pretty here. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Could you look at that? Alright, to give you guys an idea of what we're climbing through here. We're trying to make it through this log jam. 
<laughs> and there's the little cotton mouse hanging out. Great vibe. Next snake of the day is a banded water snake. A very pretty one on his belly there. Yeah. Another species to add to the list. Yeah. I'm gonna crouch Eat. down in this crack. You might uh pull a mammoth tooth out of there or something. Oh, yeah, that, clay is oh, that would be nice place for one of the snakey boys to hide in. Ooh man, this that mud right there is Alright, we just found an intermediate musk turtle. Woo! There we go. Pretty little guy. Very similar to the loggerheads, but they have a slightly different pattern on their head. A nice little guy. Alright, on the way out we just cruised a corn snake, accidentally. It's beautiful. Look at that snake. Can't beat that. This is Cameron's lifer corn snake. I always love finding them. I don't see as many as I'd like to. It's a pretty one. Maybe. The hour go by quick. Certainly is possible. It's moving this way. He was coming out of that field where there's basically nothing. I'm gonna actually get him off of the road. There you go. Into dude. the reindeer moss. Take him. Beautiful snake. You can never go wrong with a corn. Like right. They're, they're probably, yeah. I've told you, people call them trash snakes, but they are my favorite snake in all of the South. I don't think they're trash snakes at all. I mean, I don't even see them that much. It's also weird how much yeah. they can camouflage being so bright. Yeah. Like, if you look, if you really don't have all this light, like, you can't really see them that way, you know? Yeah. Right here at the start of the game.